So what we're going to be looking at is what type of oxide a metal will form when it burns with oxygen. So the metal we're going to use is magnesium, the symbol is Mg, and here's a piece of magnesium. You can see it's this kind of dark grey colour. And we're going to burn it and form the oxide, magnesium oxide. And then we're going to test out whether that magnesium oxide is an acid or an alkali. We're also going to be looking at what happens to the mass of the magnesium as we react it with oxygen to form the compound magnesium oxide. Okay, so I've put a crucible onto the balance and it has a mass of 20.37 grams. I'm going to now put my magnesium, which I've just rolled up loosely, uh, in. And I can see that my mass is going up and it's settled at 20.47 grams. This means that the original mass of my magnesium is 0 0.1 grams if I take away the mass of the crucible. So I've set up my equipment, I've got my Bunsen burner, my tripod, my gauze and on top I've got the crucible and inside the crucible is my magnesium ready to be heated so that it will burn with oxygen. Okay, so now I have my Bunsen burner on, so I'm going to turn it uh, onto the hot flame by opening up the collar to let in as much oxygen as possible, and then I'm going to uh, place it underneath, and um, what will happen is my magnesium will start to heat up and burn. Now, ideally, I should have a lid on um, to stop anything escaping, however, that's also going to stop oxygen getting in. So what I want to do is I want to lift up, which is very difficult to do without breaking it. Uh, I'm going to lift up my lid every now and then and let some oxygen in. Okay, so I just want to show you what the magnesium looks like when it's burning. So I've taken the lid off so that you can see. So there's a bright white light and then you can see what's left is a white powder, that is the magnesium oxide. Okay, so you can see that the tongs have a special bend in them which is designed so that they can pick up the uh, crucible really easily. So I'm gonna come over to the balance. And you can see that the mass is now 20.55. Okay, so that means that I have gained an extra 0 0.08 grams, which is obviously a very small amount. Now, that's because I've now formed a compound. So my magnesium has gone from being magnesium to magnesium oxide. And we can therefore tell that it is the added oxygen that makes up that eight grams, or not eight grams, 0 0.08 grams. Okay, so at this stage, it's really important that I actually take this and put it back over to the Bunsen burner and reheat it. I'm just gonna put the lid back on as well. Now, the reason that I need to reheat it is I can't be certain that all of the magnesium has reacted. So what I need to do is I need to reheat it and then re-weigh it. So I'm just going to leave it to heat for a little while longer. Okay, you can see that my mass has not changed at all. And that means that when I reheated it, the magnesium must have already fully reacted. If it had increased, that would show me that more oxygen had been added and therefore the reaction hadn't been complete. So if I think about what's happening, I've got my magnesium, which has a mass of 0 0.1 grams, and I've added 0 0.08 grams of oxygen to it. And therefore, I have got a compound with a mass of 0 0.18 grams. So actually, the mass hasn't increased. It just appears to increase, because when we originally take the mass of the magnesium, we can't measure the mass of the oxygen because it's in the air. 
And then when we take the mass of the compound, we can measure the mass of the oxygen. So it appears like there's a mass increase, but of course we know that we cannot change the mass. Here's a quick, quick uh, drawing of the diagram for this experiment. Now, remember that you should be using a ruler, so when you draw this, it will be a bit neater. But we've got our heat mat, our tripod, our gauze, and our crucible. You can draw the magnesium in as a little swirl, like that, if you want to, and label it, um, but you don't have to. Remember, the Bunsen burner just has the label heat rather than Bunsen burner. Lastly, we want to test whether our oxide is acidic, like the non-metal oxide was, or whether it is alkali. So we need to add the magnesium oxide to some water as the first step. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a spatula. I've got some of my magnesium oxide on there and I'm gonna put it into my water and then I'm going to give it a good stir. Now to test out whether I've got an acid or an alkali, I'm going to use something called a universal indicator strip. Um, and if you have a look either side of the strip here, oh, that's upside down, just turn that up the other way. Um, you can see it's got um, the pH scale on it. It's a little bit out of focus there. That's better. So this is pH 1, the red, uh, which is the most acidic something can be. And then you can see the reds gradually turn to orange and yellow and then very pale green. So those are the acids getting less and less strong. pH 7 is neutral. And then you can see on the other side of the scale, as the green gets darker, going into blue and then eventually purple, that's the alkalis. And the more alkali is, the darker that blue will be until you get the purple, which is the strongest alkali. So depending on what colour this yellow strip turns, when we put it into here, that will tell us whether it is an acid or an alkali. Okay, so we are going to try putting our universal indicator paper in. Ah, perfect. And you can see it's gone blue. Whoops. Um, and if we match it up here, it's a bit difficult to see the colour on the um, on the iPad, but actually it's more of a really dark green, so pH 9, possibly 10, um, rather than this blue, which is the strongest. So see if you can add your observations of what happened when you heated the magnesium. Now, it says here colour and pH of water. pH of water is 7, it should be neutral. Um, but then you can do the pH of the solution we made with the magnesium oxide in, because you just saw that. You can draw the diagram, because I showed you how to do that. And then there's, some con uh, there's a conclusion and, and it's some extension questions. Hopefully, you should be able to do all of those using the video.